what would your number one recommend recommendation be to any agent that they could do to make the biggest impact moving forward? So I think figure out a way to make your phone ring, right? Because I yeah. think that makes everybody in the agency working there happier. I think that is less of a grind when that happens. Insurance dudes are on a mission to escape being handcuffed by our agencies. How? By uncovering the secrets to creating a predictable, consistent, and profitable agency sales machine. I am Craig Kretzinger. I am Jason Feldman. We are agents. We are insurance dudes. Right now, while it's fresh in your mind, check out live.teledudes.com. We took our notes from over 100 interviews with top agents from around the country and made it into a live webcast. Using these strategies led Craig and I to selling more than 10 million in premium in the last two years. On this call, you'll receive the exact blueprint to get the same results. Just go to live.teledudes.com to register for this upcoming Tuesday's live call with us. If you jump on this call with us, we're certain 2022 will be an absolutely fantastic year for you. See you there. Cool. I'd like to learn a little bit more about like referrals. It seems like you you do have that really cool culture. You guys are going out, you guys are meeting people. How, how do you like keep track of your referrals? It seems like you probably get them pretty easily with with your personality of a very outgoing personality. Talk about that whole process. Sure. Um, how do we keep, so I, right now I've been doing a lot of fun like raffles, particularly during the pandemic when we couldn't get together and do fun things. I was like, what are we going to do to be fun? You know, so mm -hmm. we started doing raffles of things. So I did like home office things for, you know, first I had like a really fun office chair or get a new monitor. And so we raffled off things to do things to spice up where you were, you know, in, in there. So we did that. And now the raffles have continued. You know, I'll say, okay, this month we're doing, now actually we're raffling off the melting pot, which is why we all went. So, you know, whoever <laughs> refers to us, someone's going to win, you know, an experience taking their, you know, we had a Valentine's Day, we had a French restaurant, you know, the nicest French restaurant around here. We had a gift card for that. Things like that. Oh, nice. That's cool. love they it. love it. Yeah. And, and we try to be something that it's not just money or something. I don't know. We're trying to do something that has some sort of, you might not get for yourself kind of thing. Yeah. Quality. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's much more motivating than just some cash or a gift card. It's like, oh, there's something cool that I never would have thought of or bought for myself. Then it's a little bit more, I guess, sexy. Yeah. I, I do have, too, uh, this great photographer who I've been working with for the last couple of years. So every like year or so, we'll do a um, headshot event. I think other people have probably done them. But so I'll ask, do you want to come get a you know, fresh headshot? And last time I had like a that photographer come to my house and we had headshots and I had a party and, you know, it was fun. That's awesome. I love that idea. Oh, okay. I was gonna say everyone had like a, then I started doing like walk up song like like it was, I was trying to get people in, into their it's your turn for your you know your photo so we started doing walk up songs like you know so having some laughs so playing like nice. just a gigolo uh, you know someone's got, like mortgage lender is going up to get his picture taken it was it was funny oh that's <laughs> a lot of fun yeah so you touched a little bit on mailers why don't we talk about paid lead sources like what what kind of different or paid marketing, like what? What is your favorite thing? What has gotten you the best results? How do you track it? Like the whole, the whole gamut on these things. Okay, good question. So um, right now, I don't buy any leads or live leads or leads. We don't. So my, I feel like my goal is to get the phone to ring, so have people call us. So if I send a mailer, they're calling in and asking for a quote. If it's get a referral, they're calling in and asking for us a quote. So we're not chasing and running a list and doing that. It's all driving inbound calls to us. Uh -huh. So I spent a lot on mailers. And so essentially sending out home, home insurance quotes and people then calling to follow up. So let, let's dive a little bit deeper on mailers. How long have you been doing it? The mailer is a long time. Um, yeah. Probably five, I don't know, many years at this okay. point. Um, but how do I track it? So I am really crazy about details and like the... You know, definitely if I do any marketing, this, you know, we keep track of the phone number that came in on. And then we're tracking all the calls that came through. I don't want to miss that golden call that came in. Right. So we're tracking to make sure that got called, make sure that got followed up on, sold. And then we track, I track whenever anyone makes a sale, like I say, well, 
where did that come from? So we track, we use agency Zoom to track our, you know, all our sales that came through, where they came from. So I keep track of how much I spent um, yeah. on a particular thing. And then we see how much revenue came in because of that. And then, you know, was it worth doing? Yeah. Do you know about what your cost per sale is on the mailers? Um, that's a good question. So I was just looking at the, the, the other day. The, the thing is, and I, let me see, I, don't, I know how much came in. The problem is you have to look at like, okay, if I didn't do the mailers, then we wouldn't get an award. We wouldn't get a bonus. I don't think I may, if I just got that, you know, the cost is expensive. So if we just did that, we would make no money on it. If they never renewed, if we didn't achieve a, a bonus, there'd be no money made. Right. In all honesty. But because okay. those other things happen, then it, it, it's worth it. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Are you comfortable sharing about how much you spent on the mailers? I think last year, I, I, I spent like, I don't know, when people are listening to like $50,000, I think. Right. I don't know. But people spend money on a lot of money on leads. That's not crazy, is it? Right. No, 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 not at all. And especially if it's getting results, I'm just trying to paint the picture for the listeners, like of the different types of things. We do a lot of leads and and calling leads and use talent team and and all that. So, you know, there's many ways to skin the cat. Sure. Of course. And it's just investing in whichever long term strategy to get the results, right? Because, yeah, and referrals, I spent half of that. So, mm-hmm. like, I got the same amount of sales through professional referrals and spent less than half that money. So, right. that's why I like that. But, gotcha. like, yeah. But, like, how much can, like, you know, you can only make some, you know what I mean? So, you want to grow that, but that's also time intensive and, like, yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. the ramp. So, yeah, that's time intensive. Of course, it has a higher conversion. They're calling in. Then you have the mailers, which I think pro- my experience with mailers was it took, it took about six months for it to really start to get traction when I was doing it. I don't know if that was your experience. Um, no, as soon as we drop them, I mean, they call, I mean, when you drop them, they call. You just okay. have to drop a lot, I yeah, guess. I feel lot, like lot, you have over, to drop over. a lot. Cool. I mean, it's a low percentage. It's low, like the numbers. That's why I was like, call, that's why I call it the golden call. I'm like, if that's just cost $200 for that phone to ring. You know? right. <laughs> get the call. Yeah. So. <laughs> And you talked about referrals earlier. Are, are you, in, in, with how well you're tracking all the other stuff, are you tracking the referrals? Oh, yeah. So we honestly, I mean, we don't use a major lead system. We use like eAgent, the regular customer ma- management system that also has for customers. We use that for our prospects. Um, it has a referral source. We use that. So everybody, we, I mean, we don't talk to anyone that we're not quoting, right? So you know what I'm saying? So it's not like we're talking yeah. to a hundred people. Like we're only talking to people that we quoted and then every quote has a referral source. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. And, and do you also not work the quote up unless you're talking to them? What do you mean? So do you work a quote up if you actually didn't make a contact with them or do you only work the quote up if you're talking to them? Well, the only leads that I have are people I'm talking to. So there's, gotcha. there's, there's no one, there, there, no one exists unless we're talking. To, I mean, I guess like we have the old leads, like we quotes and we do work like people who we quoted last year. I'm not, and, and then people who left us. So we do work those kind of things, but there is no one, there's no list of anything unless we're, ta- you know, unless there's a person. Oh, I got you. Right. They have to call because you don't have their information from the mail drop or the <sighs> referral yet. So awesome. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I do use it like a quoting software that creates the mailing quote to send them. But so we didn't actually physically like there's not a person who went in there. It was just the coding software creates one for everything for the mailer. And then, gotcha. but yeah, that's, that's it's sort of the dummy quote. And then you have to dig in deeper once they, once you talk to them. Right. Okay. So yeah. we talked a little bit about onboarding new hire and the kind of things that you do there. What about for new clients? Cause I think that, that, that initial experience up front is so important to uh, help with retention. What kind of things do you do there? Do you have a set process? Um, no, we're terrible. I mean, honestly, but I really do think that we're really good about the onboarding, like the pre, like we, the pre-sales process is a full insurance review. We've spent a lot of time with that person explaining coverages, getting them where they're to be. So by the time they're done and the policies are bound, they've been done. We've done really kind of pretty much everything you're going, you know, we've gone through everything that cycle itself. We take care of canceling their, you know, prior insurance. We do that, but that's part of the sales process. Once okay. they're in, we really do nothing. Um, so and it's, I like have you almost, 
yeah. you almost onboard him on the sale. I feel like that's pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh, I know. This is fun. So we do do something, um, and I used to call everyone myself, but I think that everyone on the team is doing a great job of that, so it's not really as critical. But I have created something we call it, I call it the nuggets list, and everyone gets like their list of who they sold each month and look for, and we, we both review it to see like, did we miss any opportunities? Should we have asked them for something else? Is there something else we should do that? So at the end of each month, the sales per, every salesperson looks through their list and reviews each person. And then I send it to me and then I review it. So it's not that um, there's something standard. We literally review each sale to make sure we've gotten everything done and then we move on. That's cool. I like that. What would you say your number one retention tactic is like? Are are you doing anything particular to to help retain? You know what? We are really responsive, really responsive. I'm like crazy about if I get an email, they're getting responded to. Like we just make sure that everyone who wants something from us gets responded to quickly and we will do insurance reviews, but we don't necessarily have outgoing things, but I will do customer appreciation events. We had a Ben and Jerry's party, like after like everyone was vaccinated, we're like, okay, let's let's do something else fun. It's not a ton of people come, but I send everyone a gift card who wanted one to Ben and Jerry's who wasn't able to come. And this is also really, this actually was, do you remember like, very early the pandemic when it said you need a mask, but there was nowhere to get masks because they didn't exist yet. Like, I don't know if you can remember that world. Yes. That's a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one, oh, of my, <laughs> one of my team members sews and we said, if anyone needs a mask, we will send you a mask, you know, and then people were like, oh my gosh, send me, you know, and so that was really, and we just sent them to, that was, that helped. That was good. Then you sent a Chewbacca. It. You sent him a Chewbacca mask. <laughs> no, she sold them by hand. Oh, not yeah. the one that that. That was not a good impression. <laughs> can, can you can you do a Chewbacca, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had so, that costume in my house for years. That Chewbacca costume. That was really? The one that would yeah. make the noise. God, I always wanted that one. No, not the noise one, just the furry face one. Oh, no noise. Nice. You had to make your own noise. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is a total segue, but if anybody's watching Boba, the Boba Fett series, there is uh-huh. a, a Wookiee that is like the mean Chewbacca on it. He's phenomenal. I don't know what his name is, but he is good. Anyway. Yeah, he's really I don't good. He's, know it. He's very tough. He is so, very tough. Yeah, big, big Wookiee. I mean, they're already big. So. <laughs> This is a good one. Besides listening to this podcast, how do you uh, keep yourself motivated? I have a group of agents who are like super positive people, you know, just great. Like I think surrounding yourself with people who are going to not complain about, oh, this change, oh, this technology, oh, this whatever, just surrounding myself with people who are, yeah, you're going to play a little bit, but are going to be positive and give you encouragement. I, I think that makes all the difference. I love it. It's so true. Keep keeping yourself around positive people is just is the number one. I would say that's the number one thing in life. <laughs> it, it yeah. Really yeah. Yeah. It changes everything. Yeah. When you're around the negative Nellies or negative norms, I guess I should say, <laughs> um, it is like kryptonite. It is. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. No. So I think that's, that's the thing. I think you just have to surround yourself and then you're good to go. Love it. Love it. So what do you think is the biggest changes uh, that you see that's affecting our agencies within the next couple of years? Oh, this is good. Um, You know, it's a lot of things change. A lot of people are worried like, Oh, things are changing for us. They're being changed to us. And I think the reality is like, I am kind of happy. I'm, I'm hoping the companies change and realize what people are doing. Like people are doing things more for themselves online, um, buying policies, you know, for themselves can, online. So I think keeping up with that and seeing how things will change the, you know, how people want to communicate with agents. I think that's the biggest thing. And so how that fleshes out, we'll see. Yeah. You, you definitely are going to get left in the dust if you don't keep up with the technology as agents, um, regardless of whether it's with um, our shared carrier or, you know, any carrier, right? You've got to embrace that technology. 
Yeah. And, you know, because people are, people are going to change it. So just how is that going to affect our mar- market? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. You, you just can't keep kicking out cobalt. <laughs> <laughs> I used to code in something called SQL Windows, like some, some, some rare, bizarro little coding thing. You know, it's all fun. Is that what Windows 98 was? <laughs> you see, you don't even know. Like, that's what I'm saying. No one knows. And everyone's like, what was that? It was just like a flash in the pan. It worked for a while, though. It was good. Huh. <laughs> well, as we wind down here, what would your number one recommend, recommendation be to any agent that they could do to make the biggest impact moving forward? So I think figure out a way to make your phone ring. Right. Because I think that makes everybody in the agency working there happier. I think that there's less of a grind when that happens. Yeah. If you can fill your agents, your sales agents or LSPs or whatever we call them, if you can fill up their pipeline with eight to 10 quoted households a day, they're going to be making good money. And that's the that's sort of the bar that we set here. That's way too much in my that's we don't do that many. We just, yeah, we, we power through them. And yeah. I mean, the more opportunity you create, I think the bigger impact that they can have and, and it helps them. Yeah, more. absolutely. Love it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, gosh, Christine, thank you so much for coming on here and sharing your wealth of knowledge and, and letting us be a part of your world for a little bit. Yeah. Thank you. It was super yeah. fun. I don't know, but yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And- thank you, dude. Yes, do that. It was yeah. awesome having you, and uh, we appreciate you taking time. We know you're super busy, and that it is a, uh, you know, there's a lot to do. So taking that, taking this time out to share some of the insights with our audience is fantastic, and we really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks. Have a great day. Uh-huh. Thanks. You too. Bye. Hey, what are you still doing here? Well. While you're still here, and while it's fresh in your mind, check out live.teledudes.com. Yeah, if you weren't listening before, we took notes from over 100 interviews with top agents from around the country and made it into a live webcast. Using these strategies did help Craig and I write over $10 million in premium in the last couple of years. And let me tell you, on this call, you'll receive the exact blueprint to get the very same results. Again, that's live.teledudes.com to register for this upcoming Tuesday's live call with us. And if you jump on with us, we are certain 2022 will be an absolutely fantastic year for you. See you there.